Um, we have a gun violence problem in the city of Birmingham. This is not new to this council. Um, we also have um, gun violence has, unfortunately has a grip on a lot of urban cores across America. And what I like to remind people that gun violence in Birmingham and gun violence across the state of Alabama and gun violence across America is not an urban problem or necessarily isolated to a black problem. It is an American problem. And I think there are many things that exist. Why? I think I wake up every day trying to figure out how do we address this? How do we bring solutions? How do we decrease gun violence in our community? Uh, this council supports the same efforts we support around enforcement, reentry, as well as prevention measures. I think you passed one of the biggest budgets, biggest budgets around policing <clears throat> just two months ago related to equipping our officers with more resources, et cetera. In addition to that, um, you continue to support reentry efforts as well as prevention efforts, um, violence interruptions, everything we're doing. Um, but there's part of the conversation we don't talk about. As we continue at a local level to do everything we can, uh, state legislators who, who have a super majority vote, not just in Montgomery, but a lot of states across the nation are doing the opposite. They're loosening gun laws, which allows for more gun violence, in my opinion. And maybe it's not an opinion, maybe it's a fact. I think we all know at a certain level, you can actually remove this cover because I want the council to see what's, what's, what's here. I want the public to see what's here as well. What you see here are the type of guns that our officers confiscate. So as you know, there have been 90 homicides year to date. Of those homicides, 83 have been by guns. From January 1 um, to now, BPD, uh, we track it on a weekly basis, but Birmingham police officers have confiscated or taken off our streets over 700 firearms. That's just this year with four more months to go, over 700. What you see are examples um, of guns that have been confiscated. I think we all know the, the crack ep epidemic that took place in the 80s and the early 90s. We know part of this crack epidemic flooded in our streets were also guns. A lot of those guns were automatic, semi-automatic weapons, not necessarily guns we use for concealed purposes. So in 1994, Congress, along with the president at the time, had a great idea to ban assault weapons that don't necessarily have a domestic use, right? These are military style weapons for the most part. And you can track it. I will not talk about the nation. I'll just talk about Birmingham, everybody. You see a increase during that same period of the 80s and 90s, uh, probably at the height about 1991, 120 to 140 homicides that occurred in Birmingham on a yearly basis. The assault ban happens in 94, and literally by 97, you see a dip well below 100 homicides a year. The gun, the, what do you call it? The assault ban expires after 10 years in 2004, and you see homicides in the city of Birmingham and across other urban cores just continue to go up. So why do I mention that? Because at the local level, everybody points to the mayor and the city council and say, what are you going to do about gun violence? How are you addressing gun violence? Then you have state legislators who are passing laws to loosen, loosen gun restrictions. And at the same time, you have a, a Congress who literally will not move on banning weapons that have no place. I am all for Second Amendment, y'all. I want you to hear me clearly. I have pro-Second Amendment rights. But military weapons have no, they just don't belong on our streets. There's no use for them, but but harm. These aren't used for hunting, right? What are they used for? Well, we know in urban cores, they're killing people. And so let's talk about some of these. You got an AKM, which one is the AKM? You got it. SKS, 
show them what a SKS, S, SKS is. You got an AR-15. Now you got one that's commonly known as a mini Draco. Now this is one of the most common firearms our officers see on the street, by the way. It's small and can be hidden. Like you can literally tuck that if you want. And then you have the AR pistol, which is a version of the AR-15. And both the mini Draco and AR pistols are commonly seen these days. And then you have the PS-90, which is a semi-automatic that can easily be converted to a fully automatic. So we've all heard of the switch. If you haven't heard of the switch, it literally allows however many bullets are in the clip. Instead of you pulling the trigger every time, you just pull it one time and it unleashes the entire clip. These guns are being manufactured in our country. But let me tell you, um, like the crack epidemic, uh, these guns are not being made in the city of Birmingham. Why are our streets pillared? What? Like, why are these guns at a very high level all in our streets? And so the calls you get, the calls that are made to 911, the calls I receive about all this gun violence. We need the state's help. We need the federal government's help to ban these type of weapons because you can literally correlate in our nation when the federal government does not allow gun manufacturers to make billions of dollars of selling these guns at a domestic level, you see a correlation and a decrease of gun violence. And as long as these type of guns are allowed on the streets, the carnage we see, the pain we see, the pain we feel from our citizens who have lost loved ones, the ease and access to guns like these on our streets, we cannot solve this alone at a local level. So I just wanted to illustrate that to you because you bring these issues to me often. The people you represent, the citizens you represent, bring these issues to me. We're doing everything we can, but we have to apply pressure to state governments and federal governments who say they actually care about life.